coming up next, Booking It finishes their discussion on Johnny Tremaine. Hey everybody, welcome to Bookin' It, where four Christian homeschoolers discuss books. I am your humble and eloquent host, Cooper Cobbs, and it cannot be overstated how happy I am that I am not howling in the intro. I just, it's so much better just saying it. Uh, speaking of, we got some uh, panelists here. We got Matthew Killingsworth. Howdy. Tanner Lewis. Hello. And Isaiah. Hi. How we doing, fellas? It's good to have you back, Tanner and Isaiah. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to be good back. To be back. It was actually a surprisingly good episode without y'all, though. Oh, no. Uh, Not as good I, as it I could have been with us, though. I don't, hey, that was your fault, though, buddy. Sorry. We wanted you there. We wanted you. Tanner, how was your vacation? It was great. Technically, it wasn't a vacation. It was a work trip. Were you working during the trip? Yes. Nice. Isaiah? How was getting? How was getting paid to work? Uh, good. Isn't that... it involves money, bro? What yeah, do you mean? exactly. Yeah. Phoebe used to ask me, Cooper, how was it mowing the lawn? And I was like, Well, the money's good. You know, that was about it. <laughs> so true. So yeah. true. That's exactly. I actually, what I speaking say. of that, I mowed the lawn. Now that we live on more property, I mowed the lawn for the first time last Saturday. Got to ride the mower, and then I had to weed eat and edge some. And yeah, blow. Matthew's always wanted. He's always wanted to have like a riding lawn mower. Oh yeah. He's it, always wanted to mow Tanner's fun. lawn. <laughs> it was pretty fun. <laughs> Alrighty. Tanner Jose, you were gone last week. What are your opening thoughts on Johnny Tremaine? Uh in the beginning the book was kinda like a bit boring to me, but then it got a lot better. It's definitely my favorite book we've had to read for school. Yeah, I definitely agree with Isaiah on that it is the um, best book that we have read for school so far this year and I also think that um, it's just a very relatable book on pride and such like that yeah I don't know guys I think the Scarlet Letter was pretty good I, I think it was I think it was pretty great better better than Johnny Tremaine no no yeah no it's not okay. I think I think I, 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 I put it at third for this year so far. You finished it? Yeah, I finished it. Really? So it's ahead of, what is it, ahead of Sign of the Beaver? Yeah, probably. Yeah. It's nice. second on yeah. my list. Speaking of that, we're we'll, we'll talking about it next week. Be- you know, Because so. of some requests we got. Your hey, list yeah. Shows Talk how we listen to our listeners. Yeah. Did you get that? Yeah. It's kind of funny. <laughs> that was pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> Here at Booking, wow. we listen to our listeners. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, Isaiah, I, I was about to ask you like what your history was with Johnny Tremaine, but I think I'm going to ask Tanner because you know, you're, you're just going to say the same as Matthew, right? <laughs> yeah, All right, Tanner, what's your history totally with Johnny Tremaine? It's totally not like we don't know what Tanner's going to say either, though. No, Tanner's <laughs> a little different, right? Yeah, Tanner, um, right? I knew that this book was going to be for school eventually, and we were going on a mission trip to the Dominican Republic, and we had about an hour to the camp back from our where we were staying. So we basically, I read all of Johnny Tremaine when I was about 11, 12-ish, um, riding back and forth on a mission trip to so, a kid's Tanner. camp. Sorry to cut you off. Let me ask you a question. Do you think you enjoyed it more then or more now? More then. Really? Why? I don't know. It's just, yeah, first time reading. I always enjoy a book more when I have when I don't know how things work because then I cringe but... at every decision that they make. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like relate more to it then, though, or relate more to it now? Relate more to it now, definitely. It's... I'm older in life. I'm closer to where he was in life at that point in time. So, yeah. Yeah, but how did you hear about the book? You say when you read it, but not how you heard about it. Well, he said he was kind of like uh, I knew it was going to be read for. I had to read it for school eventually. That's kind of I think. Yes, but I, the real way he heard about it was it appeared on his bookshelf one time. It appeared on his <laughs> bookshelf. Legendary Tanner quote. <clears throat> Hey, that's right. That's a t-shirt right there. We should get Tanner a t-shirt. 
for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> it appeared on my bookshelf. Feel free. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We'll give you that. Yeah. Wait. Yeah, we all have to give like each other Christmas presents now. With our favorite quotes on the podcast, okay? Okay. We'll go. Decided. Yeah. I'll, I'll chip in five bucks to buy Tanner that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I know I always say that my quote is, this podcast is for you, but I think you guys' favorite quote of mine is when I said that Thor is hungry. No. You, yeah. No, that's, you bring that's, that up. It's, every he's hungry. Episode. Definitely. No. It's just going to be on the front of the shirt. He's hungry. He's hungry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about Isaiah, though? What about Isaiah? Is it... I'm cutting this. <laughs> yeah, either that or I agree with Matthew. <laughs> I mean, Cooper's would be humble and eloquent host. Oh, I don't know about that. It's basically the only thing no, Cooper's will the be, same every time. Oh. <laughs> no. No. Yes. no. <laughs> I will throw that. Tr- <laughs> yeah. Hey. Hey, go to go to go to go to support us and make that happen, okay? <laughs> we'll take a photo with all of us in our shirts. Okay. Hey, we'll even if Cooper, even if Cooper throws away the IU shirt, we'll get a picture of him first. Don't worry, it'll be out. <laughs> and comment which shirt would be the best one. Oh, definitely the Matthew shirt. He's hungry. I mean, that's pretty fitting. I feel like we could all wear that shirt. Yeah, I think and so. honestly, I don't too, like, <laughs> yeah. Put an arrow pointing to our own mouths. Yeah, I don't know. Tanner's be pretty good. Appeared on my bookshelf. That's pretty. That's. I think that's. I think that's actually worthy of a T-shirt right there. I agree, actually, you know? and I don't like oh, yeah. like any quote that I ever make of myself. I hate every quote <laughs> that I ever say. That's our yeah, favorite quote of but, yours, uh, though. Yeah, definitely. But um, I would just say that like it's original too, because like Matthews, there's got to be like a he's hungry shirt out there, you know. Or oh, totally. maybe an I'm yeah, hungry. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. I love how we just spent seven minutes talking about t-shirt designs that are not going to I know. Happen. That's pretty great. <laughs> I don't know. I think that's pretty hot. <laughs> Any, anything else? Uh, opening thoughts from Isaiah and Tanner before we actually hop into where we were? Nah. Yeah, I, I think we're good. good. All right. So let me and Matthew uh, left off right at the part where he went to the lights and he gets arrested for stealing, and so he's getting put on trial for stealing. But back then, the death penalty for stealing, it was death. Does that seem kind of harsh, or why or why not? Um, I think, yeah, compared to compared to our current laws, it does seem pretty harsh. But it sounds like they were kind of, well, they were under control of England at that time, right? So that was kind of... That would, they were just taking like the laws from the old English um, Empire and using them there, which I guess that kind of makes sense because when you think about old English, you think about like I don't know, like the Magna Carta time and stuff like that, which really wasn't that long ago. Well, it was point. like five hundred years ago. It, I don't know. Oh well, no, you're right. It was, it, was a, it was a long time ago, but like it it wasn't as long as we think about it. Um, and so, like, they really, like, their standards were a lot more like the standards in the Old Testament of the Bible, kind of. You know what I mean? Like, you, mm-hmm. you, you, well, you, like any little Here's sin like, is death. Yeah. Any, like, yeah. you work on a Sunday, death. Like, you know, whatever. Yeah, it's, yeah. like, very... Yeah, well, it wasn't very death. <laughs> well, no, I'm, I'm Tanner, naming Old Testament. Isaiah, what about you? I'm naming oh, Old Testament. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, death. Yeah. Right, right. But they also didn't work on Sundays. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I think it was harsh for some crimes. Like, it just depends on the crime that they committed. Like, if it was just stealing something, I don't think death penalty would work there. But I think the only ones that would be worthy of death are mainly just, like, murder yeah. or stuff like that. No, but like, I'm talking about, like, stealing. You said like, I thought you said, like, types of stealing yeah. should be death penalty. Or, like, it was harsh for them. No, I said stealing uh, okay. shouldn't be. That makes sense. Some, but like, some crimes. It just depends okay. on the crime. Yeah. Tanner? Um, yeah, I, there's not a lot to, else to say. It's no for stealing and yes for certain other crimes. So, guess what, guys? Johnny Whoa. gets set free. Yay! He wasn't convicted. That was so obvious. Woo! Yeah, he got set free by... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you forget that? Do you think he died? You, you can cut that later. No, yeah, he gets set free. <laughs> <laughs> shoot okay okay hold on when you said set free 
Cooper, when you said set free, the first thing I thought of was when he was being indentured and then he got set free, but then I was like, we already talked about that. <laughs> yeah, okay. No, you are okay. talking about the trial. I got you, I got you. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. So let's talk about how he got set free. So he was in trial. Rab hooked him up with this great lawyer, young guy oh, yeah. who was very persuasive oh, yeah. and whatnot. He brought in somewhat against his, uh, against Mrs. Lapham's will, her two daughters who were able... <laughs> Wait, somewhat against her. Well, it was a little, it was, it was a little sketchy. She was little completely situation. against. Anyways, we won't it. explain all the details of that. They brought in the two daughters who managed to convince the court of his innocence. And would anyone like to explain how this worked? So basically, the judge said, or um, Mr. Light said uh, that it was stolen on the certain date. And judge said that if he can bring one witness that um, you showed the cup to before that date, then you'll be free. So then they basic, so then they brought um, two girls who he showed it to before that, and they just testified that he showed them the cup. Yeah. That's about it. And there were some other complications about, like, why they didn't want the girls in there and stuff like that, but, you know. So after yeah. this, he goes and he works for the Boston Observer. Well, actually, right after that, he goes to the bar with everybody and celebrates. Oh, yeah. All right, yeah. Then he goes to the work at the Boston Observer. I then he goes, yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. So he meets through the Boston Observer. They meet like this. He, he gets involved with the Sons of Liberty, and they met there. That was kind of their meeting place. So, what well, wasn't it called the Observers? I don't, I don't know. I didn't, no, they were called the Sons of Liberty. No, they were the Boston Observers, but they were under the wide branch of the Sons of Liberty. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Ha. You know, there's okay. like that one. We were both right. There's, there's that one quote. From Hamilton, it's like I'm rolling with the Sons of Liberty, and I'm loving it. You know that part? It's in the Battle of. The I still haven't song. seen that. Yeah. Would no, not a nerd. Oh, okay. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, you I'm are. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, okay. No. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a nerd. Um, you were getting so. With I'm that. just saying. Yeah. yeah. So we're the based on what we have from the book. Were the Sons of Liberty like noble men? Um. Yeah. Why? They just, in the book, uh, that's how you, it was supposed to seem. Like, they didn't mention any of the bad stuff that they might have done or anything like that. They just made them seem like like uh, they were for the right side the whole time. And you know you know what I'm saying? Like, they were on the right side, and they were against the British oppressors and all that. And they were making these big, really cool plans to in all these, like, different codes and things. And they had the secret meetings, and it was right. just pretty cool. All right. Yeah. What about you guys, Dan or Isaiah? Yeah, I'd say that they were noble because they were fighting for a noble cause. They, um. So the ends justify the means. Yes. I think that's what the book the said. The book summarized it well, obviously. Uh, um. Yeah, I just agree with them on that. Like you guys said, like. With the book, it says that the, basically, like, Tanner said, like, with the cause. And then, I can't remember it that well, but I don't think it showed that much, like, of their faults or anything. So, it made him seem, like, all noble really? and perfect, I guess. You know. I think. I don't really remember it too well. We were so talking in class this week, you know, with uh, our the teacher, or sorry, the, I guess you say the tutor, but about how, like, they talked about how, like back then, if if you were a loyalist, then they were the the, the sons of liberty were going to come kill you, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like I th I thought the book did actually a great job of kind of saying, "Hey, the lines are blurred." You know, we we were the good guys, I guess you could say, but we do we they did bad stuff. I think they did a good job, but you guys think differently, I huh? I don't remember them mentioning anything about that in the book. Kind oh of no, just I just think they kind of I don't I think they kind of portrayed them like that. Like, like as they were, they were like, "Hey, the ends justify the means." I think that's kind of what they were like portrayed as. So, oh yeah, no. Go ahead. I thought, I thought um, they seemed like they were doing stuff like killing people and willing to kill people and stuff. But they then they would have like these whole meetings with all. They would give big speeches and justify the whole thing before they did it, and then. But whenever it would talk about the British killing people or like the Boston massacre. Or whatever it would, they you wouldn't get to see the British side, so you wouldn't get to see their commanders making speeches or, you know, them justifying it. So 
in the book, it kind of seemed uh, like Esther Forbes was really trying to make it seem like they were the good guys. Obviously. More of like a bias. Yeah, but... yeah. Yeah, it's biased. But like, you know that like if you read other books or whatever, like in real life, that actually the um, British Army was like just killing people. Some of them they had good reason for, but some of them they just didn't. They just killed. Yeah, so, um, do you think it's politically wise to um, stop a rebellious newspaper or to let it continue? Like now, like what is it right? But like politically wise. Yeah, it's politically wise like, to stop it. Why? Why don't you think the uh, British governor did that then over the Boston Observer? Oh, I think he tried to once he figured out about it, or he eventually tried to. Right? No, I thought there was like a whole paragraph about. Yes, there him was. Not doing he it. was. The they were very specific sure. about how um, Gage was being a wimp about shutting down uh, rebellious anything. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember that at all. I think it would have been smarter for, from his standpoint to and for his job to have shut it down like pretty much as soon as he got there, or as soon as he found out about it. Hmm. I don't know why he didn't. Yeah. So, in, in the kind of latest Boston Observer meeting, Sam Adams is like, peace is beyond the circumstances. He's like, listen, peace is, it's, it's, it's unattainable now. I will work for war, is what he says. What was your reaction when you read that? Did you, at this point, do you think war was unavoidable or not? Um... I don't think originally anyone wanted war against England. I think as the um, tyranny started to build up, as it clearly did after the Seven Years' War, it just got, um, the pressure started building for the war. It was kind of like this, um, just this ever-building, like, momentous pressure that was happening around the colonies. Yeah. You know, there's that part in the Declaration of Independence where it's like, hey, we petitioned them, we sent letters, we did everything. They didn't respond, so, hey, we're leaving the, the I guess you could say, Great Britain. You know, we're no longer part of their government. Mm -hmm. That was kind of why. Uh, but like, saying, what do you guys think about that? Yeah. Um, well, yeah, like what, uh, the Declaration of Independence part, they were saying, like, um, we have these rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and to, um, like, control and, what do they say, to keep safe these rights? That's not exact word. Yeah. But, yeah, like, basically, like, keep safe these rights. Yeah, they said, like, Gover the point of government. Yeah, governments are established yeah. among men to secure these rights. That's what it was, secure. Right. And uh, whenever and any form of government becomes destructive, then it is the right of the people to abolish or to institute new government. So basically but like that, but like was it necessary that they go to war to do that that's um, the question in the beginning uh, at that uh, point yeah, yeah at that point cause... definitely in the beginning it wasn't they tried their best to um like not to avoid war and still gain freedom but britain wasn't giving them a choice mm -hmm. well actually it was it was either so still taxing um stay with us and get taxed unfairly or go to war so just point of curiosity here what do you think was the turning point, or the breaking point, whatever you want to call it? That they're like, yeah, peace is beyond us now. I guess you call it the advent horizon, you know, yeah. of like war. Well, there was one scene in the book, or I guess like chapter or something, that was about one of their secret meetings, and Sammy Adams gets up and just like basically says exactly what Isaiah just said, like, uh, we've already tried peace. We've been trying peace for years now. It's getting ridiculous. It's getting out of hand. Like I'm. I'm honestly at this point just for war. I'm for war right now. Like he right, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. So, you think that's just when Sam Adams? No, said I it, think the beginning like, yes, of it started just with like the Stamp Act and all that, and just unfair taxing, and then it just yeah. slowly um, built up. Uh, yeah, just became where they couldn't bear it and had to go to war. Yeah. So Johnny Tremaine, he gets information from the apprentice. Uh, his former uh, kind of, uh, what'd you say, fellow indentured servant, I guess you could say, Dove, and questionable is. We already kind of talked about this, but do you think that the ends of getting information out justify the means as well? 
Wait, justify the means from what? Like, if you... Wait, wait, you remember the time, basically, John Germain, he kind of makes Dove get drunk so that he can get information out of him because Dove is a horse boy for the British, right? Oh, yeah. That's very quest. It's very sketchy, as Matthew likes to say. Uh, do you think that the ends justify the means in the same way as we were talking about earlier? Um, I would say probably because I'm kind of biased. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Again, like Tanner? Matthew said, I'm also biased. So. Tanner, you haven't said much in a while. What do you think? Yeah, I think that um, the ends would definitely justify the means. So you think that lying during war is permissible? We talked about this kind of during our Number of the Stars episode, but mm-hmm. so lying during war is permissible? Well, it depends what you lie about. Like, if it's to lie to save definitely people, it... then, like, to save, like, the Jews, like, in World War Two, then, yeah, I think that's fine. But, like, like, if you're a spy, is it okay with you okay with lying? I mean, you kind of have to be. It's your job. Yeah. So. yeah, being a spy, you are, like, marked as, like, a liar. It's definitely not right, though. Yeah. It's interesting. It's not right, but it's permissible? Is that what you're saying? Um, no. So what are I you saying, know. man? It's not... It's not really permissible, but... It's, it's more permissible than, like, letting people die. Mm. Or... But in this case, it's it's a lot different than your the comparison lesser of to the war. two evils. Yeah, in in this case, it's a lot different than your um, example with World War Two, Isaiah, because they were literally just gonna kill Jews if um, they didn't lie about it. But here, the the lying is so that they can um, be freed from a country who is charging them a lot of taxes. And yes, people would die, but people are only gonna die if they start the war that's going to cause people to die because of their anger about the taxes and whatnot and British invasion and stuff. But if they just went along with it and paid the taxes and were fine with the British being in their town all the time, then there wouldn't have been a war and people wouldn't have died. So it's a lot different because it's really like, I think I'd rather lie than let someone die. But would you rather lie or would you lie just because you have to pay more money than usual that's what that's really what i'm getting at is that is that a justifying reason to lie just because they said that they we were talking in class also about how the tax back then they were so mad it was three percent of their annual income if you live in boston now i think they said that number was 53 percent of your income is taxes and it's like well at least we have representation let's go right (laughs) But, yeah, you know, Matthew, yeah. Like, you know, you're gonna kill people over that. But I mean, I mean, it was unfair. It was definitely unfair. But you know, it was extreme. Mm-hmm. But let's be honest, they weren't only fighting exactly. For taxes. James Otis said, "For freedom, for the peasants of Russia, for these serfs of I mean, peasants for of life, France, liberty, and the, the pursuit of, of happiness." Russia. Exactly right. They, we were Actually, fighting for Patrick so much King. more than just. Oh, I know it wasn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, we were just we were fighting for so much more than just our own freedom, right. you know. And that about runs us out of time. So, donor shout outs. Tanner, if somebody wanted a donor shout out, what would they do? They would go to <clears throat> patreon.com forward slash booking it. Hey, we've included the link in the description for easy use, easy clickable stuff, you know. Um, it's not clickbait, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that's what I immediately thought of when you said that. <laughs> yep. Isaiah, like you want to shout out some of our donors? So our donors are Lizzie, my grandparents, Sebi, um, his uncle. Yeah, my uncle. Cooper's and grandparents. Grandma. Cooper's grandparents. Van Pappy and that his goes grandma. With his grandparents. I forgot her grandma name. Layla or something. Oh, well, that's... Well, so, Van Bappy and Wayla, and then Nana's also donating. Oh, yeah. So, two separate things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh. so, thank you, donors. <laughs> we love you so much. Patreon.com forward slash booking it. Five Ten star dollars. reviews. You know. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Yeah, downloads, let's please. go. Yeah. 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 Hey, uh, please, please, right please, please, please rate and review us. It goes a long way. Right. For us, to, we continue to make these for you guys. 
We love you. We'll see you next week. Yeah. Give me liberty or give me death. Oh, wait. I meant keep on booking it. <laughs>